1977, when I was 31 years old, I was playing a tournament in Gstaad, Switzerland. And right outside of Gstaad, Switzerland, there's a town called Sanen. I remember it was raining like a torrential rain um, this particular day, and there was no tennis. So we said, why don't we go to this um, famous man, J. Krishnamurti, famous guru. He didn't like to be called a guru, but he was a guru, who lectured every summer in Sanen, gave a series of lectures. And I had read all his stuff. And there are people that came from around the world to go to these lectures in Sanen. And I remember it was raining, pouring rain as we drove from uh, Gestat to Sanen. And along the way, I saw a couple of people even walking. You know, oh, it was like mystical. And we go there, and it was terrible rain. It's like, you know, we've just had in New York here five, six days of rain. And today was torrential. And go into the tent. He had a tent, huge tent, and the rain was pouring down on the tent. But you know, do you know who J. Krishnamurti is? One of the most famous gurus and a real genius. A fabulous speaker and had a great following. And he's still popular. Look him up. Krishnamurti. And we go in there and boy, am I anticipating this. Because I had read all his materials, followed him. He actually had a Krishnamurti school to teach kids. And his big principle was that every time you saw something, you should see something new, as if it was new. You look at a, at a pen, look at it as if you've never seen a pen before. That's what they were teaching kids in school. It was wonderful. So I go in there, and there must be a thousand people. I don't know. I forget. In a big tent, the rain's pouring down. And he comes out and sits in his chair. He had a special type of chair. And there I'm with anticipating. Really looking forward to it. And he says, Thank you all for coming here on such a miserable day. Let me repeat that. He said, thank you all for coming here on such a miserable day. This day I look forward to. I was going to be in a live situation with a, with a genius, an enlightened man. And he said, on such a miserable day, it was one of the great days of my life and very memorable because it was in 1977. And I'm talking about it now. In, in, 19, in 2023. 46 years later. And he called it a miserable day. He lost me with that. He lost me when he said about the weather. He's talking about the weather, the external conditions. Rain is a blessing. One of my tennis students said to me today, she came down by cab, this was a, it's pouring out there today. 
And her cab driver comes from a town, a, a country I don't even know in, 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 in Africa. I, I forget the guy's name, the country's name. He said, oh, rain is a blessing in our country. And then when you think about it, rain is also the big blessing in the Talmud because rains is, is you fructify the earth. How do you think rain is the seed for the earth? It's just like male going into female. It's rain. And he says about a miserable day, a day a thousand people come to hear him. I don't remember what he said. I don't remember one word he said. He lost me. I still listen to him a little bit. But he now, 45 years later, but he lost me. He lost me. He's talking about the weather and how that's going to affect him and his speech. And that, that day, that weather made it miserable. That's miserable weather. I once went for a run in the park a few years ago before COVID, say five, six years ago, in pouring rain. I was out the, um, near the East River. And who walks by but a nun, a sister, nun, in the pouring rain, walking and meditating in the rain. And she smiled at me and I smiled at her because we were the only people out there. And we understood what was going on. The rain is a blessing for these kind of intellectual kind of pursuits and emotional feelings and physical feelings. And that's the story. The story is that the guy lost me when he said, thank you for coming on such a miserable day. How he could identify with that as being an enlightened man. And today, well, it's pouring out. I'm walking and saying how lucky I am. How lucky I am to have b built on that terrible foundation. And emotionally, feel the blessing of any type of weather. Whether or not, here I come. And that's what I'm going to call this little video. Whether or not, here I come. That's right. What an opportunity a person has in this lifetime to f fulfill themselves spiritually. And anything that they do is a spiritual pursuit. Some people's spiritual thing is business. I know a man today, he had a heart, a heart transplant or, or, or stents or something. An old man, a 90-year-old man, he went back to the office because that's his spiritual pursuit. My spiritual pursuit is tennis. Same. Another person's spiritual pursuit might be music. What an opportunity we have to elevate ourselves in this lifetime. Gurdjieff used to say that we were all asleep. His whole project, Gurdjieff's project, the fourth way, was to get you to wake up. 
Wake up. That's what you're supposed to do because you're asleep. You're asleep at the wheel. So that's what this is all about. Not only ready or not, here I come. Whether or not, here I come.